This guy is legendary. Uh, I'll let him brag about itself. Thank you, sir. I hope I hope this presentation, but uh, we'll see. Um, what will I talk about tonight? Um, I didn't have that much time to prepare. Uh, I don't know. Talk. Yeah, we'll need a few. Um, I'm going to, to talk some, uh, something about uh, a topic that people try to avoid, project management. So, I know it's a boring topic, but please uh, try to stay away for 10 minutes. Um, you might see that tonight. Um, a short uh, history about myself. Um, my name is uh, Paul Walters, and uh, I studied at the Art Academy in uh, Rotterdam. And in 1992, I um, started with my own design company with three other people. Um, and that was a time when we had to explain what interactive meant, which means that uh, at that time there was no interactive uh, project whatsoever. It was really the beginning. And in 1996, we produced our first uh, graphic website, which was a big thing in the Netherlands back then, because uh, the pages were filled with graphics suddenly, and we had 40 kilobytes per page, so that means that you have to be really clever about it. Um, and we grew to a design studio of 35 people, which, well, is a big, big deal. Um, things were getting out of hand, and I could feel that the uh, bubble was bursting in 2000, so I Sold my shares and started a new company, um, Crash Masters, which was uh, specialized in web games. Um, after 10 years of making web games, I wanted to go back to my old blog, which is video graphics, motion graphics. And in 2010, I started my third company uh, called Very Visual. Uh, the company specializes in uh, innovative video design which means that we try to uh, use innovative techniques like stereo 3D, augmented reality in combination with video. And uh, we mostly work for ad agencies and have several international projects also running. Um, what I did for today is about see how many projects uh, are run at the moment, which means that I look at startups and use it as an example. But, um, Things I'm going to tell you, you can use for any project that you can apply to any project you're working on at the moment. First, it begins with a brilliant idea. There is a team that's formed, uh, usually by friends and acquaintances. Actually, anybody who can turn on a computer is welcome, and everybody's convinced it's going to be the next big thing. People immediately start programming, like those no tomorrow interfaces are designed left and right and the first buggy demos are produced. But no worries, the bugs will be taken care of later. An investor is fine, uh, share me the money. When will the project launch? Six months, you say? Um, sure, no problem. Then it's production time. Uh, people start frantically playing Dota. <laughs> In the <coughs> and it's only two months before launch and uh, stakeholders start to plan to see some progress. <laughs> and people start working like crazy, like little drones, and they're adding some new features on their own account, of course, because it's cool. And there's still two months until the final release. The deadline. A week before the launch, the stakeholders get an email. Uh, due to unforeseen problems, the project has slightly been delayed. <laughs> Sorry, we need more money. <laughs> but it has two shiny buttons now. And in reality, of course, it, this would never happen. It's uh, a caricature. But there actually have been projects that haven't been finished within the deadline, as you know. And to be, to be precise, actually, 29% of IT projects actually get completed successfully, which is like a really small part, uh, portion. Um, based on my own experience, 
uh, and I managed uh, over 100 projects. Uh, I managed to get a 100% successful completion until now. And I developed my own way of completing a project. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there's a, I could make a whole list of points that you need to uh, as ingredients for a successful project. But I, I took the four most important ones for me. So all this is based on personal experience. Uh, the first one is building a team, which means having the right people on the project. I mean, building a team is, is essential, whether you're uh, build, programming an app, or uh, even making a movie, or uh, having a, a, a music band together. Uh, I'm convinced that 50% of the success of a project depends on the people you choose for the project. So, make no concessions. I mean, okay, you know maybe a nephew who is good at drawing, can be like ladies, but it doesn't make him good at using the this argument. So, pick the right people. And also, with, with building a good team, uh, it's important to uh, pick the right people that gel well together. So uh, don't underestimate people issues. If you have disruptive people in a team, it can cause more problems than you think. Who's responsible for the plan? Uh, in general, what I see with a lot of projects is that you have a team where one person is, for instance, programmer, but also manages the project. But good technologists are usually not good project managers. Uh, different skill, skill, different uh, skill sets are required, and things can go really wrong when project managers start to plan their own work. And in the end, I think that you should have a dedicated person. Only one person should be responsible for planning. And in, I mean, some projects even start without any plan, no business plan, no planning, nothing. They just start. And um, I think that's because people don't like to plan, because with planning comes accountability. And what you see is that a lot of people just make a plan without uh, talking to the workers. People who work uh, should tell the project manager how much time they need to do something with, and not the other way around. What you see is that people uh, plan and say, okay, you have two months to make this. And then the person who gets the job already knows that it's actually impossible to make the deadline. So the start is already off. Um, and remember, planning costs, uh, costs time, so make it a separate, dedicated job. Say no. You have to be realistic. Um, many projects go wrong because uh, project managers tell the uh, people who are doing actual, actual work how much time they have, or because clients want a small extra feature. But it doesn't mean that you can't add a feature, but you have to communicate that you need extra time money to finish it, uh, to finish the project. Um, and so, allow people to be negative. Um, being negative is usually uh, a different way of saying being realistic. Do not multitask, uh, which means let people work on one task at a time. It's, it's difficult enough for most people uh, to work on one task. And if you have somebody working on several tasks for several projects at the same time, it means that actually nothing gets done in time. Keep it simple. Uh, work with a simple monitoring system. This is the way I work. Uh, I like to work myself within projects, which means uh, that I tried many uh, different project management systems, but most of them are too elaborate. Um, in the end, people end up filling in forms and hour sheets uh, for days and for hours a week, and. Uh, they put information in the system that you don't really need to manage your project. So uh, why, have, why would you have people fill in an hour sheet if, you, uh, if you're not an hour-based company but a project-based company? I mean, I use uh, the hour sheet sometimes to give people better insight and the amount of time they spend on the project, but not uh, just to keep the hours for the hour's sake, if you don't need anything with your information anyway. Um, I like to work with task ranges. Um, what I mean with that is that 
every person knows what it, what is expected of him on a daily and a weekly basis. So you, you make your plan in such a way that it also um, fits in with the way your life is, is made. I mean, if you, you can put, sometimes you know I see project managers that make a plan for two months or half a year, and then they say, "Okay, this is the plan. Do it." And then the person says, sees a hundred tasks they have to finish, and it's overwhelming, and uh, they pick the wrong tasks, and uh, they, you know, the, 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 the flow doesn't uh, gel anymore. So, what works really well for people is to know that, okay, these are the tasks for this week. They can pick their own order, and you know that the work gets done in that week. They still can see what what all the tasks are for the, for the future but they have more feeling of control, which is an important uh, point of limiting the, the amount of work that you give to somebody. So don't give them a lot at once, but just give them small pieces. Find my tips. Take more time to plan. I mean, a lot of people know that they need to plan a project, but they don't. They always think, well, we'll do it later, you know, especially if it's a combined job of programming and uh, planning and usually programming wins because it's more fun or it takes more time to do it. Um, it's more important. Uh, also, no brain or check the planning on a daily basis. Don't look at it when things are starting to get wrong and make a new planning again. Uh, work with the task ranges. And uh, this is also an important one. Get an experienced uh, project manager. And with experience, I also mean that good project managers, uh, they also need to possess the technical expertise uh, in whatever technology is being deployed. So they really have to know the material. You can't get a project manager that doesn't, that doesn't know what, the, what the, the end product is about. And the last one, hope is not a strategy. It's a famous one. Uh, learn, learn from the mistakes you make to prevent bigger ones and unsolved problems won't go magically away. I mean, just throwing more people and money into a project won't uh, solve the problem. So, analyze it, solve it, and then take action. Yeah.